What's happening guys? This was another video that was highly requested by my subscribers. We are going to be ranking the most common liberal arts degrees from the best, which would be S tier, to the worst, which would be F tier. Liberal arts degrees are some of the lowest paying with some of the highest unemployment rates. And those that are employed a lot of the time end up working completely unrelated, low paying jobs in order to try to pay off their mountain of student loan debt. And they get mad at the world and purposely misspell everybody's names in order to ironically show how much they learn from their expensive education education. No, all joking aside, I know they do that on purpose. It's just a marketing thing. Some of these degrees from a personal finance perspective are going to be better than others. It's never that simple that these types of degrees are bad and these types of degrees are good. So in this video, I'm going to be going over which ones are good and which ones are not so good and then which ones are just plain bad. Before we jump into it, gently tap the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm and let's get started. All right, so first on the list is going to be anthropology. This is the study of human societies as well as their development development. At the beginning of their career, the first five years, you're going to make somewhere around $42,000 a year. And then after the first 10 years, aka mid-career pay, you'll make on average around $70,000. Now these definitely aren't the best numbers if you compare them to some of the better degrees on the list or really any of the degrees on the list. On top of that, it's going to be pretty tough to even find a job in anthropology. And so for that reason, a lot of the people who graduate with this degree will end up working in completely different fields. Now it is an undeniably interesting subject. That's why over 10,000 people every single year graduate with this degree. With that being said, interesting subject, not very much market demand. And so for that reason, this one is going to go into F tier. F for forever in debt. Hey, and if you think I'm being too mean here, there's nothing wrong with following your passions. I've said this over and over again, as long as you make sure that you have enough freedom coupons to pay for your day-to-day -day expenses, or as like the government calls them, monies. And having a few extra fun coupons to enjoy life isn't a bad thing either. But if you can't make any money from your passions, then keep doing them, just do them as hobbies. Or at the very least, if you still wanna do it professionally, don't spend $80,000 on a college degree, go $40,000 in debt. Instead, don't go to college and start a YouTube channel or a blog about your passion instead. Next one on the list is going to be archaeology, and this one is very similar to anthropology, but it's even worse. Now, this one is the study of human history and prehistory, mostly through the analysis of artifacts and physical remains. With this degree, you'll start off making $43,000 a year, and mid-career pay is going to be around $65,000. Now, as you can probably imagine, there's pretty much no jobs available as archaeologists or anthropologists. The few jobs that are available are going to require, at the very least, like a master's degree, maybe even a doctorate, and there's not even that many of those available. Archaeologists and anthropologists are going to make around $63,000 a year. There's 6,500 jobs available, and it is saying that it's growing at 10%, which is faster than average, but 10% of 6,500 isn't that much. That's 650, and when you consider that 10,000 people are graduating with this degree every single year, the numbers just don't make sense. And I know that a few people unsubscribe whenever I give my practical advice like this, and I have a message for you, okay? Who are you? Just kidding, but seriously, I tell you guys this stuff because I care about you and I want you to make good decisions for your future, and you're not gonna be able to make good decisions unless you're well informed. Next one on the list is going to be criminal justice. This one is basically the study of the delivery of justice for those who have committed crimes. Crimes all the way from stealing to much more serious crimes, such as forgetting to smash the like button on one of my videos. I will find you. Now, you'd think that you could become a police officer with this one, and that's right, you can. The only issue here is the vast majority of the time you don't need to get this degree in order to become a police officer. A lot of the time you don't need to get any degree at all. Sure, there are very specific circumstances where getting this type of degree from a certain program might help you to achieve a particular career that you're going for. But for the most part, you absolutely don't need it. Still, a ton of people graduate with this degree every single year, over 40,000. Now, you'll start off making around 43,000 dollars a year and mid-career pay is going to be 71,000. It's also good to note that the meaning percentage is going to be around 57 percent which is much higher than average. Now overall these stats are still pretty mediocre but the reason this one's better than some of the jobs I already mentioned is there are actual jobs out there that you can get. You don't actually need to get this degree in order to get most of those jobs. However there are jobs that you can get that make sense if you get this degree. So this one is going to go into C tier. C for criminal minds is the best crime show. Let's be honest. Now, if you play your cards right, this one could be good, but if not, the student loans that you get is going to be nasty. <laughs> Next one on the list is going to be communications, and this is one of the most popular degrees out there. A ton of people graduate with this degree every single year. In fact, it's over 80 
thousand. Now this one is the study about how to effectively communicate information in the different various fields. Now this one is a very popular one it seems for people who either have no idea what they're doing or they're student athletes and they're just trying to take the easiest classes possible. Now the big problem with this degree in my opinion is that it's just way too general. Sure, being able to communicate information is a valuable skill but so is being able to continue breathing. You're not technically wrong about that but you're also not going to be able to find a job in breathing. This one is going to go into D tier. D for difficulty level is one out of 10. Next on the list is going to be economics, and this is the study of the production, consumption, and transfer of wealth. Now with this degree, you can expect to earn around 56,000 starting out, and that nearly doubles in mid-career pay to $107,000. These are by far the best statistics on the list, and honestly, it isn't even close. It can be a little bit tough for you to get your first job, but once you do, you get some experience, you get your foot in the door, you're gonna be golden. There's also a ton of different options Options for people who graduate with an economics degree. Some of them will end up working in the finance industry, for instance. This one is going to go into S tier, S for solid. Next one on the list is going to be education, and I think this one is pretty self-explanatory. You get an education degree in order to become a teacher. Some of you might even be watching this in class right now when you're supposed to be paying attention to the teacher. Just kidding, I make family-friendly content on this channel, but my demographic definitely isn't kids because I want to remain monetized. Thanks, Susan. Now you're gonna start off making a around $41,000 a year and mid-career pay is going to be $63,000. On top of that, it has a pretty good meaning score at 67%. Still, the pay here is obviously extremely low and for that reason, this one just isn't a very good opportunity. I wish it was, but it isn't. This one is going to go into D tier, D for disappointed in our education system. Next one on the list is going to be geography. This is the study of the physical features of the earth as well as the distribution of human population and activities. Now you can expect to make around $45,000 $5,000 a year starting out and $76,000 in mid-career pay. These are okay numbers overall, but nothing to get excited about. It does amaze me how few people know basic geography though, like it, it never ceases to amaze me. This one is going to go into C tier. C for England is my city. Next one on the list is going to be history, and I think this one is pretty self-explanatory as well. You can make around $44,000 a year starting out, and mid-career pay is going to be $80,000 a year. Now, this is actually one of my favorite subjects, but of course I would never pick it as a career because of the fact that there's almost no jobs out there for historians. And something that you really love to do, but it doesn't have any market demand, aka nobody is willing to pay you money in order to do it, is what's called a hobby. So instead I just do it on the side, I listen to podcasts, and I watch YouTube channels and blogs and all that sort of thing. This one is going to go into D tier. D for check out Dan Carlin's Hardcore History if you like history as well. Next one on the list is going to be linguistics. This is the scientific study of language and its structure. So this one is going to start off at $48,000 a year and mid-career pay is going to be $79,000. Not as bad as you probably thought, but still not that great either. This one is going to go into D tier as well. D for Dothraki. Next on the list is going to be political science. The branch of knowledge that deals with the systems of government and the analysis of political activity and behavior. So for instance, you might study why Congress can't get the freaking second stimulus package passed. With this degree, you're gonna start off at $46,000 a year and the mid-career pay is gonna be around 89,000. This is one of the better options on the list for sure. Along with a pretty decent salary, there's also a lot of government-related jobs that you can get with this degree. Those jobs tend to not only pay well, but they also have really good benefits. This one is going to go into A tier. A for am I the only one who sick and tired of hearing about politics 24 7. Next one on the list is going to be philosophy. This is the study of the fundamental nature of knowledge, reality, and existence. Now this is an interesting one for sure because the numbers for this one actually aren't that bad. This one you're going to start off at $47,000 a year and then it's going to be $87,000 for mid-career pay. Of course there aren't that many jobs out there for philosophers as you can probably imagine. However, I think the reason this one has pretty decent numbers is this is a subject that attracts a lot of very smart people. These these are the types of people that can go out and do a bunch of other things in their life as well. You could also make a good argument that although it might not directly lead to you getting a really good paying job, it might teach you a lot of practical knowledge that will indirectly lead to you having a better life in general and also making more money. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into B tier. B for books are free at your local library. Next one on the list is going to be psychology. This is the scientific study of the human mind as well as its functions. Now, psychology is one of the most 
most popular majors out there. It's got over 100,000 people graduating with this degree every single year. I have a very strong opinion on psychology and it's pretty unpopular, but it's a completely overrated degree. Is there a need for mental health professionals in the US and probably all over the world, especially with this lockdown and everything that's going on right now? Yes. However, at least here in the US, most of these jobs require at least a master's. Bare minimum, you've got to have a master's and a lot of them even require a doctoral level degree. With a four year bachelor degree, you will be lucky to find a really crappy psychology job where everybody else is trying to get the same job. You're not getting paid that well. You're going to get worked really hard. And if you don't like it, there's 10 other unemployed psychology grads that would be happy to take your place. This is a basic supply and demand principle here. A ton of people love psychology and there's not that many jobs out there for psychologists. And so the supply is much more than the demand. Still, if you are willing to go to graduate school and you know what you're getting yourself into, you know that you're going to have to go to graduate school. Don't be surprised after four years and you can't find a job. There definitely is a need for this degree at the master's or the doctoral level. But in terms of an undergraduate degree, I'm going to have to go ahead and put this one into D tier. D for the most overrated degree, maybe the most overrated. Next one on the list is going to be urban and regional planning. This is going to be the study of the development as well as the design of land that people will inhabit. These are basically the people that make sure that traffic doesn't end up in your city like it is in LA. You start off making around $47,000 a year and mid-career pay is going to be around $88,000 with a pretty nice meaning score of 54%. This is actually a pretty decent degree and I think it can be pretty useful. This one is going to go into B tier. B for I bet a few of you are watching this while you're stuck in traffic. Next one on the list is going to be most studies related degrees. So these are going to be degrees that have the word studies in it. These degrees tend to be really, really bad. An example of this would be child and family studies, which starts off making $33,000 a year and then $42,000 is the mid-career pay. Or of course the infamous gender studies degree, which starts off making $42,000 a year and mid-career pay is $57,000. That's awful and many of the other studies degrees are just like this. They're not going to teach you any of the skills that are in demand in the real world. They might be super interesting subjects, I'm not arguing with you there. Maybe double major in them if you really love them, minor in them if you kind of like them a little bit. Study them on the side all you want, but do not major in these types of degrees. This one is going to go into F tier. F for these degrees will prepare you to be a fast food worker. Now there's a few things that I want to talk about when it comes to liberal arts related degrees that are specific to these. Now first of all I want to talk about number one thing is you need to learn marketable skills. Although a lot of these degrees are very interesting, they might help you a lot in your life, they might enrich your life, all of that is great. It's tough to justify how learning these types of skills is going to get you a good job. I think double majoring in these degrees if you're really passionate about one of them is a great idea. Minoring in it is a good idea as well. Studying it on the side is awesome, but don't do it as your primary degree, unless we're talking about economics or one of the better ones on the list. What you really wanna do instead is focus on learning marketable skills. And by that, I mean skills that people in the real world are willing to pay you money in order for you to do professionally. Number two, I wanna talk about getting work or internship experience. So this is very important, especially when it comes to these types of degrees. You really wanna figure out what type of career you're going for and then figure out the steps that you need to get there. I talk about this all the time, but one of the most important steps you'll find in just about any degree or career that you're going for is working slash getting internship experience. Number three on this list, I wanna talk about networking. Now, networking is one of those things that scares a lot of people and I get it, I'm an introvert too, I wasn't always very good at networking and I've been trying to get a little bit better about it. Now if you know what career you're going for, networking becomes so much easier. A lot of the time people just go to random events and they just try to randomly meet people and it's like they don't even know why they're meeting people, they're just doing it just to do it because they heard that it's a good idea. Realistically, if you know what career you're going for, you're going to know what clubs you should join, you're going to know what events that you should go to. There are a lot of people out there who are at a certain position and they might be looking for someone that they can teach and mentor. And then there's a lot of people out there that are looking for mentors. Number four on this list, I want to talk about double majoring or minoring in something else. So if you want to go for one of these degrees that's either C tier or lower, you're probably going to want to double major in something else that's a little more practical. Or you might want to major in something that's practical and then just minor in one of these. Gently tap the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. And definitely make sure to check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you.